Good morning, we're at the Ontario, California International Airport, runway 26 left. The objective of this little video is to show basic radio navigation with the autopilot, no GPS. So today we're going to do the Ontario runway 26 left ILS approach, which involves a Vortac, an outer compass locator, and an ILS, and that's all. Well, the marker beacon, sorry. No GPS at all. I don't have anything programmed into the GPS. We're just going to use it as our uh, as our comm radio and to supply us with the uh, VOR. So let's get set up. First of all, I know that uh, out to the west of us is the Pomona Vortac, and I'm going to go ahead and put that in now just in case we might need it. But let's take a quick look here and see what we've got. All right. Our ILS is the TWO uh, ILS on 111.35. There it is. Um, we will put that on NAV1. Let's, get, let's drop this uh, for the moment. It's on NAV1. Our inbound's 258. 258. We have Paradise 112.2 and 397 for the Pettis Outer Compass Locator. So 112.2, that's on our bottom radio. I don't know if I can push this without getting my X camera. No, I can't. Well, anyway, you can see it's on 112.2 on number two here. And um, it shows ITWO, so we're all set. The only thing that I would say we might want to do is to listen and make sure we have our... It's always a good idea to check our nav aids when you're doing radio navigation. That one's correct. It's just a second check. By the way, I'm looking around to see my other monitor. I've got OBS on there. So pardon me, this is just inevitable. Okay, that's Pettis. You might obviously have noticed the noise on there. That's something that I put in for realism. It's part of my uh, low freak range add-on. Also, the tones for the for the vortex are correct at 1300 hertz, not the bogus ones that come with X-Plane, which are unrealistic. All right, so we have our nav aid set up. Uh, there, I had to itch, had to scratch my ear. All right, we have our nav aid set up. Let's take a listen to the uh, weather. Ontario INTL information pop-up. 1500 Zulu weather. Wind 260 at 7, visibility 5. Sky conditions 300 overcast, 29,500 scattered, temperature 13, dew point 12. Altimeter 2992. Arriving runways 26 left, 26 right. Departing runways 26 left, 26 right. Advise on initial contact, you have Papa. All right, we have Papa. I know that's pretty soft. I have trouble getting the sound on the ATIS to come up to the level of everything else. So basically, it's 300 overcast, and uh, the tops are 3,500. So this approach involves starting at um, Paradise. That's the initial approach fix. So it's the ILS 26 left approach Paradise transition. So we'll come up here at 5,000 feet, that's our crossing altitude, proceed out the Paradise 046 radial, 11.1 miles, until we intersect the Pettis Outer Compass locator, 
318 bearing. And we'll make it 90, pretty much a 90 degree left turn. Proceed to Pettis. At that point, we should intercept the localizer and proceed down. For altitudes, we start out at 5,000 feet until we hit high grow, descend to 4,300 feet until we hit Pettis or we intercept. Once we're established, we can descend to 3,600 feet to Yukuk, which is 10.3 miles out on the uh, ILS DME. Then we would descend to 2,900 feet to Tessri. At that point, we should encounter an outer marker. And that's the point at which we'll um, intercept the glide slope. Note, <clears throat> there's also a marker out here at Pettis. Um, unrealistically, it's uh, in X-plane as an outer marker, but it's really an outer compass locator, and even in, on the 75 megahertz tone, it would it would be sending SB out. So, uh, and it would be flashing white in the old days. Anyway, that's the situation. That's what we're going to do. So let's do our before takeoff checks. Doors are closed. Landing lights are on. Throttles at fly. Yep. RPM's 100%. Engine instruments and everything, they're all green. No caution warning lights. Fuel quantity is more than enough, about two and a half hours worth. The uh, displays and everything are all set. We have our uh, ILS inbound 258 set, all our frequencies set, our bearing pointers. Ah, I see one right here that we missed. ADF-1, very important. So, the bearing pointer now for ADF-1 is pointing at our 6 o'clock, which is where the uh, Pettis Outer Compass locator is. So, once again, our checklist saves our butt. Flight instruments, 2992, level, no flags, no Xs. We're showing a little bit of airspeed, and that's because we have a wind out of the west at 7 knots or so. We'll have to keep that in mind. Oh, I should mention, we're going to track these, this radio and this bearing the 046 radio and the 318 bearing, we're going to use the bearing pointers only. That's it. No fiddling around with the left-right thing. We're just going to leave the, the HSI uh, left-right and course selector on the ILS. It'll lower our workload. If you can learn to navigate with the bearing pointers, um, it'll save you a lot of work of twiddle, twisting around, and trying to figure out which way's which, and why the, what the, which way the arrow should point, and all that stuff. So. Um, this is good stuff. All right, uh, the transponder, altitude. We have our clearance, no pitot heat needed. Flight instruments, pitot heat, clearances, transponder. We have our um, AFCS switch to SCAS. I'm gonna switch it to at and back. That's good, it seems to be working. Autopilot one and two are on. Now, as required by FAR, Oh, so we're going to, briefing the takeoff, we're going to climb ahead to two-ish thousand feet. Then we're going to make a left turn to proceed direct to paradise and climb and maintain 5,000 feet. So one thing we need to do is, which I see I didn't do, and so once again, we're going to, let me drop this, set our altitude bug initially for 5,000 feet. Whoops. And that's the ALTS. Thing. I just changed the barrel. Our altimeter was 299 or 2, so we're good. So, 1, 2, 5, click. All right, and let's have a quick look at this in the large. Um, I showed this in the previous video. This dot tells you which one of these digits are being changed. I also have a, uh, a joystick switch set, but the autopilot has to be running for those things to work, so. All right, take one last look at our whole navigation setup, and then go back up here, and we are ready to go. All right, this is my display. I want to turn this thing off. I made that mistake last time, and off we go. Oh, I should mention that when we take off, we must accelerate to 75 knots before going into IMC. Also, we have to be in at mode, attitude mode, before going into IMC. Both of those are required by FAR. So I will be switching to at mode. Look down down here, 
SCAS at SCAS. Okay, so I will switch to at, then I'll use the uh, force trim or, you know, the release, the attitude release button at the top of the cyclic to regain control, direct control of the ship until I get um, 80 knots or so and a thousand feet a minute or so. Then I'll release it, go to at mode, and then I'll push the couple button, which I have mapped to a key keyboard thing. I'll push couple and that'll tie everything onto the autopilot. It'll capture our vertical speed, our airspeed, and our heading. And that's what we want. All right, now let's go. Gauges in the green. No caution warning lights. Off we go. Seventy five knots. Start our climb. Switch to at mode. There's a thousand feet 100. a minute and 75 knots, so that's good enough. I'm gonna couple. Did I? No. Yes, I did. Couple, right? Yes. All right, let's have a look at that by bringing this up and showing you the bar at the top. Oh, shoot, did I? I don't know if I took off with that whole thing showing. I hope not. Darn. All right, so. We're climbing, 1500, runway heading. Um, I was, we're drifting a little ways off to the left, so I'm gonna start my turn to paradise right now. And uh, let's just go ahead and make a standard rate turn. And try and um, intercept around 135 or so. Now, as we're going towards the, uh, the VOR. So if I turn left, that's gonna pull me to the left of course and the, the VOR will be, the vortex will be to the right. So turning left will make the bearing pointer go to the right. I know that there is a wind from the west-ish, so I'll put a little bit of crab in there and we're, just about 86 knots. Boy, that came out pretty good on my initial climb, but let me trim my airspeed. And um, I can do that with a, with a button on my cyclic here. All right, there's 80 knots. And let's just try and hold uh, three, 138 or 139. Uh, inbound to Paradise. So we're seven miles away from Paradise, just coming up through 3,000 feet now. And um, you can see the mode, so I'm going to drop that. I hope that mode thing wasn't present during my takeoff, but oh well. Um, anyway, most of it, it wasn't there for most of it. Oh, well, it looks like we just came out on top. All right. So once again, just to review things, we're on our way to Paradise right now. We're gonna make a turn, it's gonna be pretty much a 90 degree turn to intercept the Paradise 046 radio outbound. And we'll go out there for 11 miles and we have to be at 5,000 feet before we get there. We'll make it. Okay, we're holding right on the 139 bearing or 319 radial of uh, Paradise. Put a little more crab in there. We've drifted a tiny bit. So imagine as long as this bearing pointer is staying steady at, against the compass rose, you're on a course, a specific course. 
All right, now, instead of letting the autopilot intercept this 5,000 feet, when I get up a little bit past uh, 4,500, I'm gonna uncouple the vertical speed and use the collective to control my vertical speed by remaining in airspeed hold. I showed this trick in the, in the last video. So, as we get closer to 5,000 feet, now I am going to uncouple the vertical speed Boom, like that. Now my cyclic is in control. Now you can see as I lower the cyclic, now look at the vertical speed. And our airspeed isn't changing at all. I can lower the or collective rather a little more. And then I can bring the collective back up. That'll increase our rate of climb. This is real cool. Hold your speed just as is. So as we appro approach 5,000 feet, double check our, our distance, we're down to four miles from paradise. As we approach 5,000 feet, I can lower the collective, lower it, lower it, lower it, and hit altitude. Boom, there we are, right at 5,000 feet. Okay, so that's kind of a nice trick. Now we're getting closer to paradise yet, and I see I've drifted a little to the left. You can see the bearing pointer has gone to the left, which means I've drifted to the left, and the, the vortex is a little further off to the right. So we're still three miles out, so I kind of want to stay on this same course. So I'll turn a little bit more to my right, just to crab into that wind, just a hair more. Now just think of it this way, we're, we're two miles, from the Vortac, 2.7 miles. This thing is almost a 90 degree turn to go to high grow. Take a look again. The turn we're gonna make is, um, is here, we're gonna turn to here. And that's just about a 90 degree turn. So think of it as turning on to final. And even at a one mile from the runway, you still wanna almost be right on the center line to make that turn. We're only doing 80 knots, so See, I've drifted five degrees off, so I've got to kick in some more crab, or that thing's going to keep, we're going to keep drifting to the left of our initial course. See it, it's still pulling to the right. So, now we're down to 1.7 miles. We're going to start seeing that bearing pointer now make some moves, because we're down quite close to paradise. We're within a mile now. And again, we're going to turn outbound to 046, okay? So what we want to do is meet this bearing pointer at 046 as the tail comes around because we're going to be proceeding outbound at that point, right? Point 0.9, point 0.8, point 0.9, 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 this is probably good enough right here. So let's start our turn. This is gonna cause the bearing needle to shift around because we're gonna pass to the left of the Vortac and here comes the, the bearing pointer and us and we wanna meet at around 046, right? Right about there. Yeah, overshot it just a hair, quite a bit actually. So, darn it. Well, we'll turn back and pull this back a little ways. That was not so good. It'll come back here in a sec though. We'll take about a 10, uh, 10 degree cut to 036 and come back to it. I've done better than that. Anyway, because the, uh, the vortex behind us Imagine now I'm actually uh, pulling the needle around. I'm the, the, just imagine the vortex behind us, and as I turn left of where the bearing pointer's pointing, it's pulling the head of it towards me. So there's 047. That wasn't too bad. We were back on course within a mile and a half of paradise. Um, our, uh, there, 046-ish. Okay, so I've done better than that, but
it still was totally acceptable from from the standpoint of air traffic control uh, making a 90 degree turn over a vortex so that's still good now our next altitude is going to be 4300 feet so we need to dial that up right now we have a ways to go we're two miles and we have 11 before we get to the 90 degree turn to intercept Pettis but it's 4300 feet so This time, when we get to Hygro and we start the turn, I'm going to let the autopilot do the descent because we are already in altitude mode. If you'll notice here, um, the we have both the VS and the altitude light. Alt is what we're holding. VS is what's going to happen in order to change altitudes because we're at 5,000 feet now and our altitude selector is at 4,300. So there is an ALTS button down below. What did I just do? Did I do something? Why did that just, what did I do? Ah, oh, shoot. How did I mess that up? How did I get down to 60? Oh, I dumped airspeed hold somehow. I don't know why I did that. All right, let's bring that back up. I will recover from this by increasing the airspeed bug, bringing it back up to 80. Obviously, I have a keypad, a bunch of keypad buttons here, and I punched the wrong one while I was uh, uh, fiddling with these overlays on the video. So my apologies on that. So this will bring us back up to 80. I just happened to notice that. All right, let's try this again. drop this now. Okay, so I was explaining the VS and the altitude, and in order to initiate our descent, what we would do is um, punch this ALTS button right here. I have that mapped to my keypad, but that's what you do to start the descent, and when we get to high grow, that's what I'm going to do, is punch that. We're now 4.9 miles. And we are at, we're holding our 046 just beautifully. You can see, uh, we're right on that 046 radio. If we had this dialed up on a left right pointer, um, it would be, the needle would still be centered just right. So, and I'm just doing with heading hold. There is a kind of quartering, you can see the wind right here, uh, 260 at 7, so it's not much of a crosswind component. So I know I have to, you know, well, it's just working great right now. There's the ILS. We're picking up the ILS now. We're still quite a ways off to the side, but at least we're picking it up. Everything looks good. review our approach now. We're going out here 11 miles. We're going to make a 90 degree turn and intercept the 318 bearing to Pettis. So things are going to happen pretty fast. So um, we cannot continue our descent to 3600 feet, however, until we're established on the localizer. So we're going to descend to 4300, make the turn, wait until the uh, localizer needle is centered, and then I'm going to drop altitude hold and use the collective to initiate a descent to 3600, and then it'll probably work out that when we hit Yukuk, we'll be there and we can continue to 2900 feet, and then we'll, we'll put it back into altitude hold down here to intercept the glide slope outside of Tessri, if that makes sense. Okay. 
We're doing a fine job of holding our uh, 046 radio here. Oh, while we're at it, let's go ahead and put our approach checklist in. As you can see, we're on top. Not sure why my uh, frame rate is so slow. That's really awful. Hmm. Usually this thing runs at. Tw I wonder if this has anything to do with it. Nope. 20. Holy catfish. Well, I think it has to do with these clouds. I've seen this before. All right, well, anyway, still working, so that's what counts. Go back down here where we get the big view. Sorry about the creaking. 10.2, we're getting close. And look, we're coming up on that 90 degree turn. So, once it in fact, uh, we're 11.1, we're half a mile from that. I'll say when I get up to about 10.8, I'm going to make that turn. Again, it's 318. So we want to catch up to the bearing pointer. When it hits 318, we should be headed towards it. This is it. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. Again, it's a multifunction hat switch. I have 318 right there. Okay, and we'll start down. Boom. That didn't work. VS, the, the, oh, there we go. All right, Let, the autopilot is going to start uh, its descent now. 1,000 feet a minute to 4,300. And um, we should start this 318, 315. It's pretty darn close. Altitude. To get, okay, remember we have a, a west wind, so I'm going to crab a little to hold that 318 so we pass right over the Pettis outer compass locator. If we do this right, we'll get a nice little flashing blue light and uh, what sounds like an outer marker. to crab a little maybe more into the wind just a touch okay we should start to see the ILS localizer come in pretty soon sure why we're not seeing it. I would have thought we would be there by now. 4,300 feet. All right. There it comes. Okay, good. 4,300. And remember, we can't start our descent to 39 or 3,600 until we're established. So um, I'm going to go ahead and start my turn to intercept the localizer be pretty now I turned a little bit inside we might not get the outer compass locator beeps but I'm hoping we do we should that was still pretty close All right, right there there it is I don't know why we're not hearing anything but there's the flashing blue light I'm gonna hit nav now to cause it to lock onto the localizer and I can also drop my altitude hold and start controlling the descent rate with the collective again. And we're gonna go down to 30, what, 30, not 3,300, 3,600 to UCUC. That's 10.3 on the ILS DME, 3,600. So we need to get down. And you can see me working it here. Okay, we'll drop the collective a little more, bring it up to 1,000 feet a minute, 3,600. I don't know why the, uh, I must have turned the, marker beacon audio off while I was we were listening to the tones 
in there, but you saw the blue light anyway. I should check that. Once we get to 36, I think I will take a quick look at the audio panel and um, see if I can, so we can at least hear the outer marker. So we have localizer hold right now. All I have to do is uh, to altitude. make sure that we control the altitude according to the profile, 3,600 feet to 10 point uh, three, and we're just about there. So I can level off, we're at 10 three, well, pretty much, I'll level it off here. There, okay, now I can start down to 2,900. I'm gonna take it right back down to 1,000 feet a minute again, 2,900 feet. Okay, once I get it to 1,000 feet a minute, I'm going to engage the vertical speed hold, boop, and hold it at 1,000 feet a minute, and while it's descending to, tw well, I better not. That's, I'm gonna, um, I'll end up screwing myself here and miss my 2,900 foot. 2900s are a glide slope intercept. I'm not going to be able to get to divert my attention to the audio panel. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring the collective up to level us at 2900 feet and then hit the altitude hold until, all right, we're at 2900 feet. Now, as we proceed inbound, um, we'll start to pick the glide slope up again, and uh, that uh, looks like I've got time to go down and look at that audio panel. Are you ready? One marker. Yep, I sure did turn it off. Okay, good. Excellent. Now we'll hear the outer marker. Here comes our glide slope, and as it gets close, what I will do is engage the ILS mode. Not the nav mode, but that's going to be ILS, wherever that is, approach, APPR, I think that's right. So, and that's going to cause the glide slope to arm for intercept. But I don't like to do that until the, the we're really close to the glide slope. All right, so here we come. We're at 2,900 feet, close enough to intercept uh, the glide slope at Tessery right here. We're coming right up to Tessery right here. And we're very close now, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the ILS button to give it a chance to capture the glide slope as it goes by. Sometimes it overshoots a little. The altitude and glide slope are lit right now. But there, now we're on glide slope only. So we have the whole ILS now. Um, modes are showing at the top. And we're on our way down the glide slope. There's our outer marker, perfect. Okay. So let's take a quick final approach checks. All right, uh, crew and passengers, hello. We are getting close to landing. Everybody's seat belts and everything. All of our radios are good. We're showing good indications right on the, on the uh, ILS. Throttles fly. Uh, the uh, engine instruments are good. We're at a recommended 80 knots. It's right in the perfect uh, approach speed. We don't need the pedo heater. We don't have radar. Landing lights are on. RPM switch is normal, and we're in the normal mode on the autopilot, the AT plus ILS. So approach and landing checks complete. I'm just going to put this away now, and we'll take one last look at, at our situation. Oh, the one thing we have to do is set our altitude for our uh, missed approach, which would be 2,200 feet. Let me put that up for review. Cool. Mr. Proach, climb to 2200, then climbing left turn to 4000, direct paradise. Well, guess what? We don't need to twist any dials, turn anything, twist, uh, you know, course selectors or anything. We just fly the bearing pointer right back out to paradise, just like we did when we left in the first place. So um, this is the beauty of navigating with RMI, radio magnetic indicator. The two bearing pointers are just fabulous. So there we have it. 
see. And again, I'm sorry about l thrashing around looking, but that's my track IR. And so, uh, one other thing. Uh, our DH is 1126, that's 200 feet AGL. We will use 200 on the rate out as our uh, decision height right there, okay? And our weather hasn't really changed, but let's listen. Visibility 5. Conditions 300 overcast. So we're still 305. 2992. Check our altimeter one last time. Altitude. Okay, that's our uh, altitude for the missed approach, so we will ignore that. Okay. Now, when we get down, let me turn this off. It's pretty much an annoyance now. And get rid of this. All right. When we get down to uh, our DH, I'm going to release the uh, all the autopilot modes. Five hundred. And then switch back to SCAS to slow, and then turn off the runway. So. That's pretty much my plan. I'm not going to let this thing fly down to 50 feet. I tried that once, and it actually made the most beautiful run-on landing at 80 knots you've ever seen. So, <laughs> I don't know why it did that, but it did. Three hundred coming up. Oh, there's our runway. What do you know? Three hundred. Three hundred. All right. So, all right, I'm going to release all the autopilot modes. Click. You can see they're off now. 200. 200. And now I'm going to go height. from s at to SCAS. There's a little burble typical. Then just go ahead and set myself up to land. One hundred. One hundred. One hundred. And there you have it. Autopilot ILS in the 429. Fifty. Fifty. Get off the runway here and we'll set it down between runways. And then do a quick debrief. They're saying we won't be able to cross the other runway for a minute or two anyway, so we'll just squeeze it right in here and set it down. Right here, like so. Make sure we get in here, get our whole ship in here. Yep. All right, right there. Come on, settle down. All right, there we go. Just like this. Okay, I hope that uh, helps you understand the autopilot. I know some of the stuff went pretty quickly. Um, the big issue with this is being able to switch modes. For me, I have them uh, the modes mapped to my uh, cyclic. Another way to do that is to uh, map them to keypad or key keyboard keys. I do have them also on the keyboard keys. Um, since I have a track IR and I can look around like this, I don't need those view buttons on the keyboard, on the keypad. So I have those, those things mapped to autopilot mode switches so I can reach up, feel the dimple or the little bump on the five key and then shift around and push the buttons and change modes without having to even look down at it 
but in this video I looked down a few times and again I'm sorry about whipping my head around like this. Anyway, I hope that all helps and uh, makes sense to you. Thank you. Thanks for riding along.